So we can't get the lighting right. <laughs> and I think we're just about to give up with trying because no matter how I try and arrange this room, I look like I'm in pitch black and you look like you've got a halo on your head. But hi, everyone. Hello. This is Roberta. Hello. Roberta Stowley. I'm Steve Woody. This is Midday Mastery, episode 31. Um, and today we're going to have a quick talk about, what do you think, 10, 15 minutes? I tend to ramble, so you might have to kind of... I'll help. Thanks. If she kicks me, that's time to go. So, hi everyone. We're going to have a quick chat about moving from Wix to WordPress. And specifically, I'm going to try and brighten this up a little bit. Um, I'd like to get your point on this because I talk about it quite a lot, but you're actually going through it. And for those of you, just to let me show you really quickly, hold on a second. We're in the process right now of migrating a Wix website to a WordPress website um, across all of different screens and things that we've got set up here. So, hi. Hello. What's it, um, what's it like at the moment? What's this process like for you right now? Um, be honest, I don't want you to lie. No, don't worry, I don't lie. Um, but be nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, basically, uh, the thought of migrating from Wix, which is terrible for me, by the way, um, across Why? to web because it's limited the, the limitations because you can't do the things you want to do you constantly have to do workarounds so, so like square peg round hole sort of thing yeah I mean it's really good if you just want a static website that has no functionality to help you like kind of grow your business and you just want it to be an information resource like to do nothing else maybe get an email address some text and some pictures fine but when you want to use it for more complex things that you need in order to grow an online business, it starts to fall quite short. So, when did you set your website up? By the um, way, her, uh, Roberta's website, which is on Wix at the moment, you can visit, is robertastylelee.co.uk. I'll post it below. When yeah. did you set that up originally? Um, that went live in, I think, uh, 2015 or 2016. 2016, sorry. 2016, okay. And... You asked me why I chose Wix. Uh, well, I mean, we had this conversation when, when we first met. Uh, it was, it's almost like one of those, you're on Wix, I'm going to cross the road. No, I'm joking. It was like, I wanted to, I wanted to um, get an idea just for people, because there's a lot of people, in fact, I know, Clee, I know she commented earlier and said, like, when would you recommend using Wix? But yeah, why, why Wix? Why for you? Um, because um, I had, this is a classic story and some of you might um, be going through this or have ended up on a platform like Wix because of this. Um, I had a developer let me down and promised to deliver a website, forgot to do it. It was Christmas, I was supposed to go live in January. It was Christmas Eve and I was like, oh, I have just Christmas and a few days to get everything up and live. So of course I just opted for the easiest platform Wix is what you see is what you get, so you just basically see, you move things around, it's really simple, um, and it was fine, and I planned to use it as a short term, so not for the long term, and then I kind of got stuck in the Wix track, and, he was creating more and then content I went in more it. content, and then I had another developer who again let me down, I was going to migrate all of it into WordPress, which was where it was supposed to be built in the first place. So I don't know if any of you have experienced this, but finding a developer that you can talk to and understand your business and your needs and doesn't try to bamboozle you with like techie terms is quite difficult and that charges you a fair amount for what they're doing. So I think I think that's interesting though because the problem with because you pay a monthly fee on Wix, right? Yeah, I mean the thing is with Wix is it's quite contained in terms of you know what your outgoings are for your website. Yeah, which is It's, it's cheap. It's nice for that. It's cheap, yeah. yeah it's you don't have to pay hosting, you don't no. have to mess about with anything, I mean, you just build budget. it and it's done. Like, yeah. It's the budget end, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I've always said, like, if you've got a hobby, I think Wix is a great platform for if you've got a hobby, or um, a comment I give earlier is, if you need to get an MVP or a minimum viable product, like, if you just need to get something into the marketplace, I mean, there are other options. I'm not saying Wix is a bad option. I'm just saying that I'd probably use something like ClickFunnels. They do like a two-week free trial. So you can just get a sales funnel up to test if it works. You don't need a whole website. But I mean, with you, you, you went quite deep, didn't you? You had a shopping cart. You had two members areas. You've actually had two different websites. Well, that's because of the limitations of Wix. So, of course, um, I started with a, a, a quick website just to see me through January, February. I needed to be live. And then again, I was waiting for the next developer to migrate everything to WordPress. Delays, delays, delays. It didn't happen. During this time, I have to keep, you know, doing the whole band aid thing. Make do, make do. Mm. And of course, yes, I had to start 
creating more content. And the whole idea was Wix was always like beta, sort of test it, test it. And then I ended up getting stuck. And then I had my Roberta Style Lee site. Um, I couldn't create a membership area to charge. So Wix makes you create another site, find more another so domain. So then sites. you have that. So you can have different membership levels. Um, and of course, I you can't migrate your um, blogspot blog over to Wix. So you've got a blog on Blogspot. Yes. You're on Wix for one site for Wix for your site, and then another site on Wix for your membership area. Yeah. So you effectively got three sites now. Well, I actually, yeah, I do have three sites. And you can't, you can manage them all from the same sort of editing suite, but you can't interchange the content. So if I want to move the content, say, from my membership site to my customer facing site i can't i have to recreate it all and this isn't even considering like tracking data like you have no idea about if someone visits a blog article or whether they purchase from you you can't track any of that information can you um i mean i you you could i could if i had gone through all of the steps that were in there there are options to add um tracking analytics and things but i didn't do it because to be honest um i found wix customer support to be a nightmare okay. um, and uh, so I mean it's just for me personally Wix was good for a short-term option but for long term the limitations are just sort of holding me back I'm just doing really crap workarounds so what do you think now in terms of so obviously I'm, I'm really interested in your mindset on this mm -hmm. um, and for specifically if any of you are watching this because um, I know there are a lot of people out there who are like, oh, I don't want to be on WordPress, or oh, I need a website, but I don't know. Like Squarespace, Weebly, Wix, like, I get it. I totally get it. Um, in terms of what you've seen now, because this is our second day working through your rebuild, right? Um, the first day was kind of just like getting everything together, looking over everything you had. And obviously we're doing some stuff together anyway, so we've gone through your customer avatar, we're looking through your business model. But in terms of now actually migrating and you seeing what's possible, how do you feel now you've seen what you had and what you're getting? Um, I always, well, I mean, I guess I'm kind of a little bit sort of, um, I always knew what I was missing. Yeah. I just didn't feel like I had the time or the energy to do the migration because it was just too complex for me to take the time away from my business doing what I need to do. Mm. Um, and then it's all the processes. So for me, it's not just about the website. It's about can the website integrate with all of the other tools and things that I need to use. And again, a limitation of Wix. <laughs> of course, because before, I mean, you was using MailChimp, I think. Yeah, I had um, MailChimp. I did have um, lead pages at one point at the beginning, and then I got rid of that. So I just had too many things to log into. <laughs> so you, mu yeah, so I mean, you must have spent a lot of time fighting fires and going from pillar to post. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we've done now, just so that you know, by the way, is uh, we've got one website one web WordPress website with a members area and a learning management system because you've got two online courses now. Two courses, yes. So you're going to have a styling course and you're going to have a coaching, uh, course. coaching course for mm -hmm. coaching confidence. So any ladies out there of <laughs> styling or confidence Not coaching, <laughs> I'll speak to Roberta. She's done wonders for me. Um, I would say that the biggest thing that we've done for you at the moment, though, is set up active campaign and migrating everything into a sing single CRM. I mean, I'm literally looking at this screen here and we've got Google uh, Forms that have been set up. Mm -hmm. um, but My the, stuff is everywhere, right? There is this, like, this trap. I just had one little thing here that was cost effective, one thing here, one thing like there. It's like putting I a different outfit on and then changing it and changing it and changing <laughs> well, it. And it's like clothes everywhere. It's not, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, it's a mess. It's a total mess. There's like wardrobe malfunction. But it's, 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 I mean, what I really admire about you, though, and this is what I find interesting is you're going to be successful no matter what, like regardless of me or anyone else, because you're just the sort of person who's like, I'm just going to get shit done. Like, I don't care if you're, if you're not there for me, then I'll just find another way. So when your developers let you down, you just keep, like, I know a lot of people who would get to the point where the developer lets them down mm -hmm. and they just stop. And they're like, oh, I can't do it. I haven't got this. I haven't got that. And they come up with excuses. And you're just like, no, I'll find another way. And you've, like, I admire the fact that you've just got it out there. I've tried. You've done really well. Like, you've got it out there. But, <laughs> It's not working how I need it to work. This is, and this is my point, is that you never actually launched, did you, officially? Um, well, I did a kind of, well, no, because I, what I needed to do is my business at the moment is not geared up to take a high influx of inquiries for me to capture all the data, to know everything I need to know about my customers. And I, that's, that's too important to miss. So I, I literally had a virtual assistant, a spreadsheet, we were manually tracking and trying to keep up on top. It was just, it was just a nightmare. 
So this is the thing for me, it, well, it's not just the website that you see as the sort of pretty shop window, mm. but it's all the functionality and it's the capturing of the data and it's the automation in the background. So, I mean, I have a marketing background, so I know what should be happening, but implementing, knowing and doing, and doing it's yeah. totally separate. And I know what I should be doing, but I was, it was too hard on Wix. I couldn't do what I needed to do. And so how long have you... Because you had this developer, that was last year, right? Mm -hmm. How long have you been actively looking for someone or how long have you just put up with it? Because you, you must have been at a point where you was looking for another developer. When did you get to the point where you are just like, I'm leaving this, I'm done with it? Um, well, definitely, like last year, um, I, that was the, the developer that I had worked on. We'd discussed everything. So kind of what you're doing with me now. Mm. Had another developer, we were discussing it all, but they were not as experienced as you. Did no. you hear that? <laughs> Is that on, we've got that, it's on camera, good. Um, and it was remote. And there's something to be said, actually, about actually being able to have a bit more contact time and talking. So that's been really helpful for me as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I had a big company that let me down, that forgot about my teeny tiny little site. Unfortunately, not a you know, £120,000 website, so they forgot about me. Um, so, boom, Wix. Then, searching for the next developer. I already have some, and I'm a bit annoying, aren't I, Steve? Because I have a bit of knowledge when it comes to... <laughs> no, it's, I think it's quite cute. It's, um, there's certain terminologies, and I, I mean, I must come across quite condescending. Not, in a, not, not trying to be in like, a derogatory way or anything, but I say things, and you're like, yeah, I know that, and I'm like... Oh, of course you do. I just, you know, I, I just didn't assume that you had a technical but background, but that, you're actually very clever. But that in itself lends itself, there's a problem. Because when I'm talking to developers and people in other countries that want to outsource, and I'm saying, well, actually, that's not necessary. Yeah. I know that process. That process doesn't cost that much money. So I'm a pain in the arse. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, but, no, but the thing is, like, it's a really good thing because... Because I know what needs to you, be done. Yeah, exactly. You know what needs to be done. So it's actually, I think, this has been really easy because mm. you're sitting on your... By the way... Such a cute little, it's like... It fits in my handbag. It fits in my handbag. It fits in my back pocket. <laughs> it's like a tablet. Cute, um, small. That's but we I have, mean. we've we've managed to migrate a thing, and it's nice having it, because Roberto obviously being very style and uh, brand aware, I'm I'm not a designer. I'm just going to put that out there. We've, we've had, a, there's a lot of padding conversations <laughs> that are going on yes. about white space and things that I'm, uh, white space is important. very aware of that. I, I was aware of, but obviously from, from your, design yeah, from design perspective, but that's why this works really well because you can create the content. You now know, I mean, looking at the system and I mean, I know we haven't done any training on it yet and you haven't seen it. Just having a look at what you've seen. What do you think? It's really intuitive. You don't have to have any technical knowledge like I do. So for me, it's quite easy. I can just jump straight into it. But I haven't really asked you any questions at all how to use the system. No, you've, you've just shown me just it. once and I'm just straight in there getting the work done. So that it doesn't me, have to be overwhelming. Yeah, that's the one thing I want to say is I have put this process off for two reasons. The financial element was obviously the quotes I was getting from developers were... You know. I'm curious. Can you share? Because <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I mean, the first time it was, it was definitely just to get a bog standard site up and built in WordPress. I was looking at five and a half thousand, and that had none of the functionality that I actually wanted. That was going to be phase two. Note to self: charge more money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then when I realised, actually, I, I came up with like the dream concept with the last developer, and he said, like, tell me everything you had wanted to do now and in the future. And that was the interesting thing because he was kind of pushing me to say, well, this is why you need like an open source platform. This is why WordPress is really good. And he also went into Wix and said, this is awful. You know, it doesn't integrate with all the other platforms and tools. And if it does, you have to pay uh, an expensive money, monthly yeah. fee. And then Wix don't support those platforms. So it's, it just gets really messy. Um, but anyway, I came up with this whole thing and I was looking at the first part of the project being 15,000 and then we had a phase two and a phase three. So I mean, it was getting really expensive. And if I'd had my dream website, probably looking at about sort of like 40 grand. 40 grand. Yeah. So what are your, if you don't mind sharing, you don't have to um, mm -hmm. say no, but your outgoings in terms of the systems we've set up for you. Um, do you mind me telling, well, I can, we've got active campaign. We've got a theme on WordPress, but in terms of monthly reoccurring costs, I think we've got it down to about £100 a month, haven't we, so Yes, yeah, so just literally over £100. About so. £100 a month. That's active campaign, that's the hosting, and a few licensing fees that have got ongoing maintenances. Really good. 
and yeah and, and you're looking in terms of the build the whole thing being put together and we've done it in i mean i know we're not finished yet and we're still working through it but we're looking at two days to do the bulk of it with i mean probably another couple of days yeah tweaking design tweaking. Things like so that. you're looking at a week a full-on week of nine till five or i mean eight till midnight <laughs> in my case <laughs> but it's they're, they're long days but the idea is we're not we're getting things yeah done. and we're doing it at a comfortable pace as well because we're, we're, we're we've spent a bit of time on the whiteboard going through working things out um so about a week you're probably looking i would say to set everything up properly if you're gonna spend a decent amount of money i mean Roberto probably doesn't mind showing but you're probably gonna spend about three thousand shouldn't really need to spend any more now. But bearing in mind in saying that, Roberta's got two membership sites, learning management system. There's all the integrations into um, the CRM, all the automations. I mean, this is a fully functioning business already mm -hmm. that's being migrated onto a new platform. So, I mean, it's it's just worth bearing in mind. You were quite, what was it like? You said 15,000? Mm -hmm. For the first stage. For the first stage. And we're talking about 3,000 for the lot. Now, that doesn't involve content and design because that's already there. But in terms of the systems, the development and the time, and it could probably be done cheaper. If I wasn't building it, it could be done a lot cheaper. But it's just knowing what right questions to ask. So um, I want to, obviously, I will let everyone know once this goes live, but I want to just go through the questions. Is there anything else you want to share about this process that you're going through? Um, I'd say um, probably the first thing is procrastinating. <laughs> Uh, and putting it off, thinking that, oh, it's going to be too stressful to migrate. Yep. And I have done content migrations in the past, and they have been... Stressful. Stressful. Um, How's this one so far? Well, this one, even though that you can't, um, you know, do a kind of an export button from Wix or no, you, which would be time. wonderful. Um, this one, well, it's obviously, it's not just the processes and or the technology, it's you. You know, you're helping and you're pushing everything along. So Steve is wonderful and he's doing a great job helping me and taking away all of the stress and, the, and like the fuss that I would personally focus on. But because you're kind of like managing the project and sort of directing me and showing me the right way to do things, I'm still able to do my business on the side, do what I need to do and focus on this. And we're going to get things done in like, I'd say, you know, we're just over a week, I'd be in a completely different place like the dream place I wanted to be in in my business two years ago. And then I procrastinated, worked with the wrong people, wasted money paying the wrong people to do the wrong things. And now here I am with everything I wanted to do and you've just implemented, implemented, implemented. And I'm like so excited for it. To and be there's alive. actually been some give and take as well because like, I don't know if I'm allowed to share this, we'll find out if I get slapped, but I, you, no, you, uh, it's fine, it's fine. You, you was like, I need to get a photo shoot done before I put my photos up because oh. you, you wanted to be, you know, yes. you're, you're wet. And I, I totally get that. And I was like pushing you yeah. gently. But no, we, but you were encouraging me to get the stuff done that needs to get the site live. And, we, and we're, we're at that space. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like just get it out there, get it done, and then you can... Yeah, so you're not just technical support and guidance in that respect. You're kind of like, as I say, like that kind of project manager that's pushing me through to, to complete the project on time and when you work alone it. but when you work alone yeah of course if things come up well it's hard to stay motivated on especially your when projects. you're training i mean anything could happen you could drop a dumbbell on your face <laughs> i mean yeah I mean, she dropped a dumbbell on her face yesterday training because actually what this is one thing we didn't talk about roberta is actually a personal trainer who's migrating away from personal training more into the fashion. Well, no, personal training is something I've been doing part-time. Yeah, as a hobby. Right? Alongside yeah. the coaching, but I'm really launching the personal styling now. So before it was just coaching, a bit of part-time PT. So, yeah, I mean, I don't really want the whole PT and dumbbell story to be <laughs> to be getting out there, but thank you for sharing. Oh, I'm so sorry, but <laughs> yes, I'm surprised she's here today. I dropped a dumbbell on my face. <laughs> Still look good for it. Um, yeah, so to be honest, the, the whole thing about this process has been, before we even started this migration, because I really want to get this point across, before we even started doing this, we sat down and we looked at the business model, didn't we? How many memberships you need to sell, mm -hmm. how many courses you need to sell, how many clients you need, at what, um, at what level do you need those clients um, to, to meet targets. Then we looked at customer avatar. We did. So we looked at what customer avatars you're going to have, who you're going to be working towards, what you're going to be doing. Um, and in, in great detail. I yeah, think. in great detail. So that's part of the six-week course because Roberta's doing the six-week course mm -hmm. that I've done. And so that was when we got on to week three, which was started talking about the systems and the sales funnels. 
which is where we said actually do you know what we need to have a look at this and can i just say as well i kind of entered this a little bit cocky like because i have a marketing background yeah you do <laughs> <laughs> I, I come from corporate marketing right so there's a big difference when you leave being an, an employee working for a company with a big budget and really big systems and support teams you mm. take it for granted then when you're on your own and you're suddenly on what is essentially a shoestring budget and then you can't afford all the systems that you're used to you it, everything's like really like tricky and you still keep thinking oh i know what i'm doing i know what i'm doing i've done this i've done this but the truth is i actually needed somebody from the outside to revisit what i had done and actually try and kind of push me in the sort of direction as a as a small solopreneur trying to kind of get out there and it's it's, it's essentially like this e-commerce business which is totally different to the type of business websites and the things i worked on before and i think that's I think really that's, interesting yeah, it because is. i was too cocky at the beginning there, i needed your help but i didn't realize it until we went through all of the stages in your so course. do you think that helped going through that absolutely back? because because you and also things change in your business and you lose focus and your customer may change and when you introduce new services you have to go back and do that again you see so it was for me that was like super useful i mean the fact that you know i knew my customer really really well yeah, yeah it's been but, it's um, a process but it's it's but good it, to it have that good to, to, to revisit to revisit and confirm exactly who it is i know that i'm working with and that in turn has helped us kind of figure out which systems are an absolute priority yeah I mean, we, we've actually streamlined a lot of what you had. I mean, we've yeah, looked I mean, at a lot of it and said, we don't need that, we don't need that, yeah. condensed it down. And now it, we've got a very intuitive, automated system that nurtures and funnels um, the mainstream traffic so that Roberta is only dealing with qualified leads. Yeah. I think that's the important factor here is that... I was wasting my time before. Not to be rude. But yeah, no, but yeah, yeah, but just yeah. It's, there's a lot of there was a lot of manual processes and mm -hmm. dealing with people that were never going to be clients mm -hmm. and would always want your time. I mean, For obviously, free. of course, because yeah. everyone does, right? <laughs> so now we've, we're just protecting you a lot better, mm -hmm. which is giving you more time to focus on doing the things like your podcast. Yeah, and delivering, out, delivering. Check out Roberta's podcast. Yeah, I'm delivering. quite proud of it. Please check out my podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I am even on Instagram. I mean, I'm you know, there, there's things that I'm learning all the way along as well. And yeah. your Instagram channel is on point. It's really good. You. And so, yeah, I'm I'm really interested to see where this goes. But I'm gonna have a quick look through the comments. Um, thanks so much. I hope this was helpful. I thought we'd do a different style and just uh, flip it I'm around here. today. We thought it'd be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. She's making it look good. I don't know why I can't flick through. It doesn't let me flick through the comments. So, um, do you want me to open up Facebook? I love your live free post. Oh wow, thank you, thank you for the likes and everything, guys. I think why are you getting so many likes? I never got that many. Like when I do mine, it's just like one thumbs up. Normally it's from Dylan or Rhett, but you're getting like loads of likes. Wow, that's expensive. Cody, hey, Dylan, hey, how you doing? Um, she had a problem. Find I can't scroll through the comments, guys. Um, I, I'll bring the comments up. Look, since you Please just join. Hey, how you doing? You have your glamorous assistant, look. See, this is awesome. Okay. <laughs> Someone says how heavy were the dumbbells. Shh, we're not going to talk <laughs> about that. Get me in trouble. Yeah, I can't believe you did that. I me. was going to go on Amazon and buy some aerobic oh style God, dumbbells. Somebody's that on Facebook. Oh my god! <laughs> now I'm embarrassed. I'm having a look at the uh, questions quickly. Okay, sorry. No, no, is that all there is on there? For no, there's loads more. She's pretty or not? That that's mean. I mean, she, yeah, I'm 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 gonna agree. I mean, it's definitely uh, lightened up the, uh, oh, the I Facebook. Just, I, actually, I actually did just put loads of slap on for my photos, so. Just for the Facebook photos. No, not for the photos, not for Facebook. So. <laughs> not for Facebook. Steve didn't put his makeup on this morning, so... That's what it was. I just, I didn't put my makeup on. I don't even know how to refresh this. Um, yeah. But there's definitely more comments. I can't see the comments, guys. Um, I'm really sorry. I don't know why. Well, you can... Um... But anyway, I'll go through them later. So, have an amazing day. And just consider, obviously, if you're on Wix, there's nothing wrong with using Wix. Like, if Apart you need... From, I disagree. Because... Okay. Wix is good for the short term, but not the long term. If you want to really grow your business, scale it and have a profitable online business, not Wix. No. So Wix is, Wix, there's nothing wrong with using Wix if you've got a hobby. If you've got a hobby and you're doing something and you haven't got a budget and you're just testing something out and you want to get something out there quickly, by all means, use Wix. But if you, as has just by my assistant been fantastically <laughs> demonstrated, if you want to scale, if you want to automate, if you want peace of mind, if you want to know the systems work together... You need a platform. And, and here's the thing as well. If you're using Wix or Weebly or Squarespace or any of those, even if you're 
um, marketing on Facebook, you, you're always going to be um, at the mercy of the, the owners. You're in their playground. You know, whoever, whoever's platform you're on, it's their platform. They can change the rules. They can move the goalposts. And it's the same because when you're with Wix, you don't have control. You may think you have control. You don't own your website. You're renting it. And they can take it down and get rid of it at any point. And as a business owner, specifically someone who is online, if you have a website which is your kind of like your, you know, your linchpin to your income and to what you're doing, you need to really own that. That, that should be yours. It's why you should be on an open source platform. It's why WordPress, like when you consider WordPress, it, it dominates 30% of the market. 80 million websites use WordPress. They do it for a reason. But there's good and bad ways to use it. So just consider, like, just take what I'm giving you and just go and use it. It makes sense. I mean... I mean, try Wix and then you'll probably be sat in the same position as me if your business starts to get traction. And then you think, oh, I would like it to do this. I would like it to do that. Oh, I don't want to do all the manual stuff. Oh, it doesn't click in with all of these other... Yeah, and then you and can... Then you, then, then you start to realise the limitations. But, I mean, it might be fine for you for six months and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think... But I would still say two weeks, click funnels, just use that. Mm. It's like, you don't need to spend a lot of time. Like, people feel like they need to spend a lot of time going through stuff. Stuff's falling down all over <laughs> the place. But just getting out there and getting started is the most important thing. Just yes. Published is better than perfect, and at the same time, like there's enough information out there now. I mean, I've shared enough information now about all the systems that you need to get started. I will be really interesting. I mean, to see how you are in terms of your results. Because can I just share one last thing? It depends. It depends what it is. Um, thank you. This is useful. Thank you. I really yeah, appreciate it. Good. So you're useful. I'm, oh, see, I'm useful. My, my, it's, well, it's useful. Yeah. Um, I would. It's useful. Yeah. I would just like to leave on this one last story because I'm aware of time. Um, and I haven't been kicked yet, yet. Where I am. Oh, no. <laughs> She's poised <laughs> and cocked and ready. Um, you mentioned to me um, about the. You don't know where this is going, so why I love this. <laughs> I just don't. This is the this is the danger of Facebook. This is the danger of Facebook. Life. <laughs> so you mentioned to me in a conversation. Don't worry, I'm not going to uh, uh-huh. embarrass you or anything about um, some advice that you had. Mm-hmm. Um, can you share about that? Which advice? I've been given lots of advice. About your website and some changes that you made. Oh. Look, at the, look at the relief! Look at the relief! <laughs> Could have gone anywhere, right? Oh, like, Craigie, just, you just shared the dumbbell story, for goodness sake. It, um, it can't be any worse Okay, no, no, no. Oh, no, there was... No, I'm joking. No, no. And actually, this is the bad side. This is where I dropped the dumbbell. I think you look fine. Thanks. It's given me better cheekbones. Um, I, um, I... As you know, I always, when I came to you with my website and spoke about it, it came with a caveat, right? I said, I never intended to stay on here, but I've made the best of a bad situation, and this yep. is what I've done. And I was kind of like talking through the journey and the story. It's kind of like, look, you just looked at it and said, oh, why is it doing, you know, X, Y, and Z, or not doing X, Y, and Z? And I said, oh, because I was advised to change it. And so I'm part of an online entrepreneur community, which are, you know, in general, really, really, really helpful. I think I was getting to that point where I was so desperate for my website to stop underperforming and start delivering what I needed it to deliver. I was willing to take on everybody's advice and feedback. And well, it's like you say, it's helpful. Like sometimes people that are helpful, they mean well. Exactly. And then um, when we went through and we looked back at the analytics and you said to me, no, your page should have this on it. And I said, oh... It, it used, used to. to. We took it off. <laughs> and it said, you should have this on it. And I said, oh, I did build that. That was on it, on the homepage. It should have the opt-in. It should have this. So all the things that... We, you had built. I had built. We are recreating. And you had then been advised and by... I took it all off. By, by people who are with, successful. Successful very entrepreneurs. Very successful entrepreneurs who have websites that make them lots of money. Um, so, of course, I'm listening because, you know, they're successful. I mean, the thing that I overlooked was they don't know my target consumer my yeah. business style is totally different to theirs yeah like 100 percent um but i value feedback and i think some of the sometimes you have to take feedback i keep saying with two cups of salt because i literally took their feedback and went okay i'm changing it yeah i changed it and then my split test split test i didn't split test um which i knew i should by the way um but i just didn't get round to it split test always split test um, and uh, yeah, my site traffic just bombed. 
like I mean totally it's, it almost went, went dead overnight and I was really busy with other projects and doing things and then it wasn't until we went through and we no, said like, give me the analytics did it ever like, recover um I mean I, I, it looks a little more busy probably because you and I are on it migrating every day <laughs> But no, I mean, currently as it stands, it's not delivering because I reversed what you had. What so, I had. So there we go. Just, uh, I'm going to leave you on that point. If you're ever going to take anyone's advice, even mine, any nice. advice, whatever you've got, if you've got anything, use that, and it's called the control. Keep the control and create a variation. You can have variation A, variation B, and split test. Send half the traffic to one, half the traffic to the other. And what would you recommend is the best thing to use for split testing? Uh, www.vwo.com. VWO, you can do a free trial with them. Go on VWO, you can do your split test, you can split test two URLs, or you can even go in and edit the images and the things on there. You'll figure it out. But at the end of the day, don't take someone's opinion as fact. Okay? Don't take opinion. Take their advice and their opinion and test it against what you already have. If you don't have anything, that's fine. Just get something out there. But if you've already got something and someone tells you to make a change, test that change. Put it through a, a series of like a 100 or a 1,000 visitors so you can get some real data. Don't just test it with five of your friends. Test it with real traffic and find out which one performs better and use that. Because that's the only, that, that is why this is a never-ending game. It's why I put my status out yesterday. Test, 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 test. Always testing. You should always, at every stage, continuously have a test running. I'm going to leave it there. I've had my bar. That's my moment. Thank you, guys. This was exactly what I needed today. Literally, exactly. Mwah. You are more than welcome. It's exactly why we're doing this. Uh, and thanks to Roberta for her time, because obviously we're working on her... Um, business now, so thank you so much for My this. Pleasure. I think I hope it was helpful. Sometimes hearing somebody other than Steve speak, I guess, could be nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't know. I understand. We're locked in a room. Yeah. Like, I've literally locked the door. We're not yeah. going out until it's been built. So we're in a tower. Fever. So we're growing her hair so she can uh, let it down and get someone to rescue her. So, robertastoley.co.uk. Go and have a look around her site now. Oh, and then you can see how amazing And then afterwards. have a look afterwards. So when we launch this this next soon week. Next week, This maybe. next week, maybe. Next week. When we launch this, have a look and see the difference. Um, just mm -hmm. go and have a play. robertastoley.co.uk. Have a look. Have a look at the user journey. Have a look at the site. Have a look at next week and see the difference. And just consider that she was quoted £15,000 for this. Um, and how long, did they tell you how long that would take? Um, well, because it was obviously going to be a custom build. Yes. So we were going to be kind of like reviewing it month on month. So approximately 12 weeks. 12 weeks, so three months for a custom build, which would have tied her into always needing a developer. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind that now, Roberta can do everything herself. Oh, Not and that also she has I wasn't going, if, uh, to, 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 it would have been more expensive if um, I um, had complete ownership. So I had to give the developer. A percentage? If, no, the, he had to own quite a part of Oh, wow. It. So he... Because because of all of the different licenses required, there was basically I don't know developer talk, I guess. Um, it... Just be careful what you're doing. Mm. All right, There's, you can take advice from people, and you can go out there, but. Just because, like someone says, WordPress, there's also good and bad ways to do that as well. So just, just be careful. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, Wix, WordPress, I think we've just established WordPress is definitely the best way to go if you have a decent business with the potential to make you lots of money and you want to scale it and you want to automate definitely. it and you want that peace of mind to just crack on and do what you do best, which is look pretty on camera and I get to just waffle all the crap to you. Oh, thanks. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye. Bye.